In this video, I'm going to work out for you one way in which to answer the second part of this question, which asks, how can we scale up the speed of the DNA polymerase enzyme to that of an automobile? That is, how can we relate the speed of a molecular machine, a protein machine, moving at the molecular length scale to that of a macroscopic object, an automobile, which moves on a road and has dimensions with which we're familiar every day? These two things are completely different, and so to compare them, what the problem suggests is that we use the length of the DNA polymerase. So let's sketch that here. Here's a bit of double-stranded DNA. And we are told that the DNA polymerase spans two turns of DNA. So this is one turn, this is the second turn. And so the size of the DNA polymerase with respect to DNA is something like this. And this DNA polymerase is moving forward at some speed which we're going to calculate and express that speed in terms of how many lengths of the polymerase are covered per second when it moves. So, so that's the molecular example. The other example is that of a car moving on a road. So here's a car uh, of some sort, and it's moving uh, in on, on this road, as I've sketched here. And at first glance, it seems very difficult to relate the speed of a polymerase to that of a car, because the length scales are entirely different. But what we'll do is consider the length of the car and express its speed in terms of how many lengths of the car per second is covered if it were moving at the same lengths per second speed that the polymerase moves at. So that's the relationship between the microscopic and the macroscopic uh, world that we're asked to do here. So first, let's calculate the speed of the DNA polymerase in terms of lengths per second. And to do that, we start with the information that's given at the top of the problem, which is that it takes 80 minutes to replicate that is one by one, copy all of the base pairs in the genome of the bacterium, which is 4 million. And I'm going to abbreviate base pairs as BPS. So that's 80 minutes for 4 million base pairs. To so, so compute how many base pairs per second, we will say that this tells us that 80 minutes into 60 seconds are required to give you 4 times 10 to the power 6 base pairs. And so now it's easy to compute the speed of the polymerase in base pairs per second because we simply uh, divide the total number of base pairs by the number of seconds, which is 4,800 in this case, 80 multiplied by 60, and that turns out to be 833.3, or roughly 800 base pairs per second. That is one measure of the speed. It doesn't yet have distance in it because it just says these many base pairs are replicated uh, per second, and it's roughly 800 base pairs per second. But we will now express this as the number of lengths of the polymerase that are traversed in a second. And to do that, we use the fact, which is given in the problem above, that the polymerase enzyme, here's the polymerase, uh, spans uh, two turns of DNA. So that's two turns of DNA, which is approximately 20 base pairs. So to calculate the speed of the polymerase in terms of lengths of the polymerase traveled, uh, displaced per second. So to compute this quantity, we look at the fact that it moves uh, 800 base pairs per second, and we divide that by the number of base pairs in the length, which gives us the number 40, and that is the speed of the polymerase in terms of lengths per second. So that's the first key result, and we'll just circle that and say that that's the speed of the polymerase, which I'll write as Paul. So now let's try and relate this to the equivalent speed of an automobile that covers as much of its lens per second as the polymerase does. And I'm going to choose as the automobile, the answer will depend on the automobile, I'm going to choose as the automobile a Mini Cooper. And I checked the length of a Mini Cooper on the Mini Cooper website, and that told me that the length of this automobile is 147 inches. So, in one second, 
if the automobile were to cover 40 over its length, then distance traveled in one second would be length multiplied by 40, which is 147 into 40 inches, which works out to 5,880 inches per second. And that is a speed. Corresponding to the speed of the polymerase, if we assume that the car moves the same equivalent length per second. So to convert this into miles per hour, uh, we use the fact that there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. And so if it moves 5,880 inches in a second, it will move uh, 5,880 inches uh, divided by So, hold on a second. Let me first uh, do a unit conversion here, which is if the speed is 5,800 inches per second, let me convert this first to feet per second. I divide that by 12. So that's 5,880 divided by 12, which is 490 feet per second. Now I use the fact that one mile equals 5,280 feet, which I indicate with that little stroke there. And then, uh, therefore, the speed in miles per hour will be 490 feet per second divided by 5,280 feet per miles, which ends up being 0 0.093 miles per second. To convert this to miles per hour, we divide this by uh, 3,000, multiplied by 3,600. So the speed in miles per hour will be 0 0.093 multiplied by 3,600, because they have 3,600 seconds in an hour, which gives me this number, 335 miles per hour. This is a very high speed. It's about half the cruising speed of a 747 jumbo jet. No Mini Cooper I know of runs that fast on the road, which serves to emphasize how very fast, on a molecular scale, the polymerase is moving. But what is particularly remarkable is that the polymerase makes only about one error in one million to ten million base pairs copied. A remarkable feat of molecular evolution that has led to this highly accurate polymerase moving at speeds that are difficult for us to comprehend.